Welcome back to Supernatural Sleuths for another episode where we track down all things weird, cryptic, and paranormal to discuss and decide what we believe to be fact or fiction. I'm Seth Dowd. I'm Katie Morgan. I'm Logan Probst. Today we will be discussing whether or not werewolves really do exist. But first, let's kick things off with another Guess the Cryptid. Each episode, Logan gives us another list of facts and descriptions of a mysterious cryptid, then we try to figure out what it is. So, Logan, take it from here. I'm a reptile feline that was sighted in 1779. Ever since, more signs popped up in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Italy with the nickname Alps Dragon. Is it the Loch Ness Monster? No. Hmm, I don't know. I I feel like this is familiar, but at the same time, I like I have no clue. The only thing that I know is that, like, you said, like, serpent-like, kind of? I said, like, it's a snake-cat hybrid. Well, the only thing I can think of that's, like, snake is, like, Quetzalcoatl, but I know that's not it. Tatzelworm. What? Yeah, Tatzelworm. Huh. I don't know what that I've is. I've never heard of that one. And now it's time for today's main segment of the podcast, Do You Believe? Today's topic will be werewolves. And actually, we have a bit of a role reversal today. Actually, this time, I will be a skeptic, and Logan is the believer, and Seth is still in between. Let's see what facts Logan has to tell us about werewolves. They're mostly European legends. Where a man, I think they get, like, bit or something by a wolf. And then when, like, a full moon shows up, they transform into a werewolf. And that's it. What you think about it? All right. Well, what's your evidence to prove that they actually exist? I mean, right now, that's all, like, just urban legend. Well, you got these other werewolves, like the Michigan Dog Man, Webster County Werewolf, Wolf Man, Wild Woman, Dog Man of Defiance, and the Beast of Bray Road. What evidence is there to say that... They're actually real. People say them. There's, bro, werewolves have more like photographic, like clear evidence than Big Squatch. But is, is there like any physical evidence? I mean, as far as sightings go, I mean, who's to say that someone didn't just see a wolf or an animal or even there is something that actually the origins of the werewolf. The first story was from the Epic of Gilgamesh, but the first werewolf was actually a person with a rare condition called hypertrichosis, which is a condition of excessive hair growth, which because of all the hair growth they have, they still take on a human form, but a lot of their facial features make them look more animal-like because they're hidden by the fur. The first case of hypertrichosis was how the false, in my opinion, false rumor of werewolves began because there, there's people who were seeing this this person who had this condition and were making fun of them for being a wolf person and really it's just a condition so who's to say that the whole thing didn't just start from that and even the the structural like comparison between the human and the wolf's skeletal system because of that transformation between the two would really not be scientifically possible well did that person have like a snout or like pointed ears as like wolves do their face looked like a snout because of how much hair was hiding their facial features i do know that that i don't get no 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 no. that i don't get because if there was a like if their whole entire hair looked like a snout how it's it's the condition. I mean, it, it hides your facial features enough to make it look like something is what it isn't. There would be a difference. Like, if he opened his jaw, all of his hair would be covering his mouth. With wolves, that doesn't happen. Obviously. And it would be more animalistic. All their humanity would be gone. They would be classified as unhinged. Now that leads me to the next point. Where Were these actual, like encounters or were they just sightings because it, it would be easy to confuse in the moment if you saw something like that like it would be easy to get confused because of how odd that is and your brain tends to if it sees something it 
will place things there that don't belong there if it seems like it fits. So, like, if a person looks like a wolf and they don't have ears, your brain might place them there just because, like, out of sheer terror. Well, you haven't even... Br- okay, if those people back in the day with that system, they didn't shapeshift. Wolves transform. Now, back with the Y woman, the Cherokee believed that she can shapeshift. Was she ever seen shapeshifting them? It was Cherokee legend. Of course they're going to believe that. Katie. Yes, sir. With you believing they don't exist, how did, how would their hair make the form of a snout in on their face? It's just the fact that there is so much hair there, it hides the facial features and they're hard to make out. So it gives the illusion of having a snout or like a different facial feature from a normal human being. Snouts are long. With the the werewolves existing, uh what makes them like what would make them only turn into a werewolf at moonlight? How does that make any sense? And how does it make sense that only moonlight for a full moon would make them turn because moonlight is just refracted light from the sun? That's what the legends say. I mean, if we're also going off by the other legends on, like, as I said, the Y woman, that's just Cherokee legend. There's always some, like, truth in the myth. Okay, well, also, I have another point that I feel is very important to the start of the legend of werewolves. Back when the stories originated, it was... It was in a time where, obviously, there were not nearly as many medical advancements as there are today. And there is something called lycanthropy and zooanthropy, which lycanthropy is the psychiatric syndrome where someone believes they are turning into a wolf. And zooanthropy is a psychiatric syndrome within which the patient has delusional beliefs of turning into some kind of animal. Now, this can be caused by brain injury. It can be caused by dementia, the use of like improper like medications or withdrawal. It can be caused by cerebrovascular disease, seizures, delirium. And you got to think like all these things are things that they really didn't have cures for back then. So obviously things like this were more common because if you can't have a, if you don't have a cure for it, then more things come from that. So if your head gets injured, like, they didn't know what to do for that a lot back then. So, like, if you keep, like, getting your head hurt, like, obviously something psychiatric is going to develop. And that was really common. Do you have anything else to say as a rebuttal to this statement? Well, are you saying those legends are just completely full of scat? What I'm saying is that legends all start somewhere. A lot of times they start with a misconception by somebody or uh, something a delusion or a misconception within the human brain or with people thinking that they are wolves like someone if someone saw someone who had like hypertrichosis the hair condition and heard different people talking about thinking that they are turning into wolves the combination of those things obviously would start a rumor of real werewolves i mean there's so many possibilities for where The entirety of this legend could have come from. But from a scientific point of, like, the bone structure and even just, like, the thing with the sunlight, like, the chemistry, like, it's not scientifically possible. Well, here's two things. The legend of the Kraken turned out to be real. And second, wolves can stay on their hind legs for, like, a minute. Most of these sightings lasted longer than a minute. And they make these ungodly roars. And the kraken was just a big squid. Which isn't really a kraken, it's just a big squid. Wolves howl. These are not really that much howls. Then what are they? They're roars. Wolves growl. When threatened, they growl. Yes. All wolves do. They growl, they howl, they make weird noises. It's with the other like demonic howling or whatever you want to call it that doesn't sound like a wolf it sounds like a mix of a of a human scream and a wolf howling what would that be 
Well, who's to say someone didn't hear a wolf and a human at the same time? Like, if someone saw a wolf and the wolf was growling and the human got scared, heck yeah, you'd hear both at the same time. How do you explain how the human body, when going through the transformation between a werewolf and a human, how the bones just, like, almost instantaneously grow or expand and the organs change? Shape-shifting. Okay, that sounds like Logan. All right, Seth, have you come to a decision? Yes. What do you believe? It's just not scientifically possible. There's no way that it would happen, and it makes no sense with how only full moons bring them out when it's the same as any other moon and just reflect refracted light from the sun. I do not think they exist. That's it for the Supernatural Sleuths. Come back to the channel anytime to revisit old episodes. Make sure to subscribe to Red Devil Productions for future releases from the program. Thanks for listening.